Seismic retrofitting is a process of enhancing existing structures to make them more resistant to earthquake damage. But why would existing structures need enhancement? Shouldn't they have been built correctly in the first place? Actually, they have been, but not exactly. Let me explain. Buildings are engineered according to standards, and the standards by which the buildings that are now insufficient have been designed were flawed. Studies have shown that buildings built around 1970s have less than 10% of the seismic resistance required by the current standards, and the background for this change was new knowledge in seismology and earthquake engineering. But not all buildings are similarly insecure. There are quite a few factors that account for that, and one of them is the type of a structure. Steel structures have the best response to earthquakes, meaning that, given all circumstances are the same, steel structure will be less insecure during an earthquake event than any other type of structure. But that doesn't make them earthquake-proof. They can still be insufficiently resistant. So how can we compensate for this deficiency in steel structures? To answer that question, we first have to address what earthquake action on a structure really is. Earthquake is energy, released when tectonic plates slide against each other. That energy travels to the surface via waves that go through multiple different layers of soil that dissipate some of it. If the energy that gets to the building is higher than the capacity of the building to withstand it, then we have issues. That energy could get dissipated on vital structural elements like beams and columns, and the structure could collapse. So we have to make it possible for the building to get rid of that excess energy without damaging the main structure. How can we do that? We can add certain elements to the structure that will act as fuses of the system during an earthquake event. Earthquake energy attacks the weakest links in the system, and we put these additional elements in key locations and design them in a way so that they will be the weak links. Earthquake energy will get dissipated on them and other elements will be protected. Weak links have to have the ability to get deformed without falling apart. This way, we make sure that the earthquake energy gets spent on deforming them as opposed to destroying the vital structural elements. And in case the earthquake happens to be so severe that weak links get completely wasted, their replacement is very practical and economical.